It's time to talk about gardening. Welcome to Mid-American Gardener. I'm your host, Diane Nolan, and I am here to direct questions and, and learn. That's what I'm here to do. <laughs> I'm here to learn all about it. I do teach horticulture at the University of Illinois, so my areas are floral design, cut flowers, and perennials, but there are some really talented folks here, so let's find out who is here, and then the folks who are calling in can direct their questions that way. Let's go first to Dr. Stephen Still. Take it away, Steve. Thank you, Diane. Uh, as uh, Diane mentioned, we are educators. I'm a retired professor, emeritus professor from Ohio State University, where I taught uh, perennial plant materials and woody plant materials, and presently serving as executive director of the Perennial Plant Association. So perennials, I love perennials. So, Yay. Uh, what I'd like to, to do is uh, talk about uh, one of our perennial plants of the year, and it's the anemone, actually hybrida honoring Joe Bear. Uh, our Perennial Plant Association started the uh, program in 1990, so we're in, what, 26 or 27 uh, plants of the year. Uh, this is a great fall flowering uh, perennial. It's not new. It's probably was here, uh, came out of France probably before the Civil War, so it's... Uh, a great tried and true uh, perennial, great uh, for fall color, and you can see from this, this slide many, many flowers. So it's a great thing that we should be using more in the fall landscape. I really do like the perennial plants of the year because it, it lets people know good perennials, even if they're not new. That's it's right. Just, it's just, you know, <laughs> some that should be grown. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah. That was a, a beautiful plant. I want more of those. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now we're going to go in the middle. Let's go to Teresa Mayers. Hi, I am Teresa Mayers. I am a uh, horticulture instructor at Parkland College. I teach woodies, perennials, greenhouse, some pest management, turf grass, a little bit of everything. But I have a question on a Italian honey fig that someone was trying to propagate and they had done it by a uh, dormant bud cutting, so they still had a leaf on it. And cuttings are always kind of an issue of timing. Just because it worked right one time, especially with our woody stuff, it, timing of it could be just enough off that it's gonna be a little fussier and the bud may not have had enough quite energy there to break. So all I can say is you just keep trying and you do more than you want and hope that you have mm -hmm. some. But Michael Durr, uh, has a woody plant propagation manual that he has written and you should be able to find it at a local library or they should be able to get it for you and if you need exact detail on anything woody plant on timing on which hormone how much what you should be doing with it that's the bible to look at it really is it's a nice concise information piece and I like propagation I enjoy it greatly and I just keep trying and what worked one year may not the next, so don't give up. Just keep doing more. Um, that is a really good tip. Just keep trying. Yeah, because just you because you took a branch off of a plant doesn't mean it was the best branch. And so you may have got one that had some other issue you didn't even see or know. That's why you just take all the ones that you can. That's right. Without, <laughs> without That's making right. the plant. I really enjoy having this plant right here <laughs> next to me, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. And now, Dyke Barkley, tell us about some plants that are right here next to you. All right. Me. Uh, my name is Dyke Barkley, and I teach the horticulture program down at Lakeland College, as well as run my own place, Barkley Farms. Kind of specialize in perennials and ornamental grasses. And I was thinking, what could I bring tonight that looks really neat in bloom? Or maybe a question I get asked is somebody wanting perennials but wants, want them to bloom all the time like an annual. <laughs> and instead I thought, what about looking at foliage, something that's going to be there all the time. So I just grabbed a couple of perennials here from the, uh, the, the golden leaf, the Hy Hypericum brigadoon next to uh, uh, a coral bell, and it's just the old purple palace. Um, but the main thing is, is look how they contrast with each other, make each other pop and stand out. So sometimes maybe instead of trying to find that, that one perennial that's gonna bloom all summer or all year that isn't out there, look at some of the combinations in foliage and, and that may do a lot more for your garden over the longer season. We, every time we saw it on camera, we were just amazed how great mm -hmm. this looks. And these would grow nicely together because yeah. of and then how do you know we're really plant people? We were all up here petting them all yes, also right. before, we, before we started. So <laughs> I I'm do. really glad you have Palace Purple here because it, uh, 
it's obviously the first one that came out. There's yes. been 70, 80, 100 cultivars, yeah. and it's still a real dependable plant. It's the workhorse. If you, it is. Because some of the new ones get a little finicky and have to have perfect conditions. This one you can treat uh, as a workhorse. My purple palace looks great at home. I've got it next to the burgundy ajuga and it, mm. it, it, and with coral bells. It just does a great job. Yeah. And mm. it's a little across sun to shade, mm. it'll take mm. it. So, and now this brigadoon hypericum, that is a really nice combination. <laughs> okay, well, let's go to our Did You Know segment next. Adult butterflies usually only live for a few weeks. Most of their life is spent as an egg, caterpillar, or chrysalis. All right, let's go to the phone lines and we're gonna start with Richard's question. It's on line two and he has a tree question. Hi, Richard. Hello, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, I got a little problem, I guess, with a tree. I transplanted a sm very small tree and it looks like the thing's dying. Now, uh, it's probably as big around as your thumb, is, if it's any bigger than that. But I was wondering if I was to do all the leaves on it, it was about, oh, about three foot tall. Kind of a spindly looking tree, but it looked good when I planted it. Now, if I was to cut that down to about six inches above the ground, is there a possibility that that might sprout up again? How long has it been planted? About a month. Ooh. Mm. Not so sure. If it had been in the ground longer, possibly, but not, I don't know if you'll get it from that. You, you do that usually with older plants that have established root system versus a, a newly transplanted mm -hmm. plant. My guess is the roots aren't happy to begin with, is why the tops may not be looking good. But we've also mm -hmm. had a lot of wind and some nasty weather, so that may be something that it still may come around. It may force another flush of leaves. Oh yeah, very likely. Yeah. So keep it watered well, at and least I, an inch a week and mulch. And, and cutting it back is just gonna stress it to me. Mm -hmm. You're gonna reduce the leaves that it yeah. does have. So I, I think I would sit tight, get through the season and see what it looks like. Okay, thank you, Richard, for your question. And now let's go to Marlene's question on line three and it, she has a perennial question. Hi, Marlene. Hi guys, thanks a lot for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I apologize, I could not catch the name of the white perennial the gentleman introduced at the beginning of the show. Okay, well, we'll, we'll right. talk perennials again. Yes, yeah, very good. It's a, it's a fall flowering anemone, and the uh, cultivar is Honorine Jobert. It was discovered in a, a French garden, uh, as I say, over 150 years ago. So, uh, anemone, Honorine Jobert. And you have uh, a nice little bit of a French twist to it without making us not understand what you're saying. So that, <laughs> that was <Mercy>. pretty good. Because <laughs> sometimes you can say it in a way I have no idea what they're talking about. But it is a nice anemone and that red fall color is so pretty. I would say the leaves almost look like a maple. Mm -hmm. It has a real interesting, some, there's enough maples that, you know, it looks like one of them, but it but is a you real. Know, if anybody's wondering, they just have to go to the perennial plant website and all of the plants will be listed there. That's the, right. Mm -hmm. Good. So Plenty of Thank Plant you. Association's <laughs> website would have all of this information. And since we have the executive director here, I am sure you'll notice mm -hmm. that picture that you saw early is probably, probably on the <laughs> website, <laughs> so since it is your picture. Yeah. So anyway, do that's an excellent um, information suggestion. Okay, mm -hmm. now let's go to um, line four, and Julie has a question about the, uh, uh, the book, I think, that we talked about earlier. Hi, Julie. Hi, Diane. Yes, uh, if Teresa would just repeat the name of the um, it's Michael uh, Manuel it's and the author on wood cuttings, or yeah, it's Michael Durr, D I R R, and it's the Manual of Woody Plant Propagation. It's as simple as that. Michael Durr has m several ID books but this one is actually more on propagation. Yeah, he was known first for his tree mm -hmm. identification book, and I drove past the house he lived in when he, he was my teacher, and doesn't that name sound familiar to you too, <laughs> Steve? Yes, was he does. your advisor? Uh, yes, I actually taught with him when I was a graduate student. Uh, that's <laughs> what I thought yeah. so, and, and so uh, you'll notice the perennial plant manual is a little, has a, a little bit of the, the same, same format, yeah. and it's really great, but Michael Durr was um, here at the University of Illinois for 
quite a few years, and I drove past the house where he lived, and it is gorgeous. The mm. rhododendrons, mm. it, it shows you. That red one on the corner has been gorgeous for years. Oh, they yeah. have, he, he landscaped, and he, you know, left and went to another university, but it is still beautiful. So D-I-R-R, -R, he knows his woody plants and propagation mm -hmm. as well. Okay, good, thank you. I like these follow-up questions, then we get everything uh, figured out for sure. Well, Betty has a question about a peony on line two. Hi, Betty. Hi, Diane. What's your question? Um, okay, about uh, seven or eight years ago, I bought a tree peony on sale, and uh, it was late fall, and they pruned it down as if it were uh, an erasure peony. And uh, I thought, well, it's a start, you know. And... Um, it's just never done well. It's finally sent up several shoots, and um, I got one half bloom this year, and the other buds were all blighted. And this has happened, you know, the last two or three years that uh, they it just doesn't go ahead and bloom and make a pretty blossom. Okay, tree peonies. Who wants to tackle that? <laughs> I'm looking down, so I'm sure that some of you are going to tackle it. Well, you gotta be careful that you're not getting what the rootstock is. That's what I was wondering. If it got pruned too far down, what you're actually getting is the rootstock, not what you paid for. <laughs> and tree peonies are not very inexpensive. They're fairly expensive trees, little plants, but uh, it does make I you wonder because mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, aren't tree peonies grafted on regular peonies? Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. And then they, the regular peony slowly dies over time when the tree peony goes ahead and roots and becomes a good plant. But it was a first year on sale and it was cut back. It may it, have popped up from it, the below. Yeah. You may want to cut your sale losses. You know, <laughs> at least it was a sale. It, it took me three tries to get one to take and yeah. hold at my yard. Yeah. And yeah. my third one now has done well. This year I had probably six blooms on it, so I was very happy. So it is mm -hmm. an art to the uh, mid-American landscape <laughs> to get a tree peony. It needs a little shelter. Mm -hmm. It really does. Okay, well, sorry we didn't have a, oh, it's going to be fine, but I'm not <laughs> sure that it is. All right, let's go to line five, and Judy's question is about a dogwood. Hi, Judy. Hi. Um, I have a question about uh, young dogwood trees. We bought two last spring, and we planted them. So this spring I was anticipating some little white blooms and a really pretty little tree. Well, one of the trees, all the leaves came on, no blooms. And the other tree looks like it's half dead, and but it's got half of the leaves are on it. So I'm wondering, is it does it have to be so much more mature before it blooms? And do you think this tree that only has about half the leaves on it is going to be okay? <laughs> they do need some maturity to bloom. They're not always going to bloom out like they should the first year. And it's kind of funny that when you buy it at the nursery, it had blooms on it. But that's usually because they've stressed it and pruned it and forced it, or it might have been containerized. And that's the same with the perennials. A lot of times perennials look better in the nursery than they do the next year in your garden. And then the next year, everything looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't give up on the one that put the leaves out. I think he's just doing yeah, they're, fine. They're slow to root out. They take yeah. longer than most other trees mm -hmm. to get going. And the flowers are produced almost a year ahead or at least way ahead. So yeah it's kind of not if it's not flowering this year it had to do with stress last summer so with it being new I, and if it's got leaves take it and run and see what it does the other one half dead i don't know i watch it my uh my red bud got it's probably a 25 year old tree and half of it went out one year and then i didn't get around to pruning it next thing i know things are starting to break some late buds came out yeah yeah mm -hmm. so it, I, if it's newly planted be patient. Give it a chance. Give it another little time. Let's see how it goes through the summer. You might be surprised, and it might be something that it can lose part and still recover. Yeah, I think it's really maturity. Mm -hmm. I had a similar dogwood, different species. It was a Cornus cusa, the mm -hmm. uh, Japanese dogwood, and it didn't flower for three, four years. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, you're going to get cut down. And <laughs> it flowered the next year. Stress. <laughs> you stress. <laughs> <Stressed it. laughs> <laughs> oh boy, and it, it is, um, I think dogwoods are a little bit slow, mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. let them establish, so 
I think we're encouraging you just to hang on. Be patient. Be wait around. All right, let's go back to um, the panelists and let's do an email or what you have to do next. And I'm gonna go to you first, Steve. Okay, very good. Uh, this uh, was email, uh, lilac bush at a house and it's very bare on the bottom. And then the leaves first start at four to five feet off the ground. And there are only five to six blooms in the spring. Sent several pictures and looking at the uh, uh, photos, it appears that um, it's kind of hard to see on our monitor, but it looks like there may be borers. And uh, the French lilac, which is what this plant looks to be, are uh, very uh, susceptible to borer type of damage. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I can give a lot of great information about this uh, plant as far as promoting more foliage at the base of the plant. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, maybe cut your losses and go with a different type of uh, lilac, a one called Miss Kim. And we were just talking earlier about how beautiful it is now. It's a little bit later flowering than our French uh, lilacs that we commonly see in the old-fashioned garden areas. And it is uh, also has a little bit of a reddish uh, maroon fall color, which is another uh, fortunate thing. So I can give a lot of uh, enthusiasm for uh, sticking with this uh, plant because the borers have damaged the xylem and the phloem and so there's very little food. There's probably enough carbohydrates and water to be able to throw out a few blooms but not the blooms that we want. It's not going to get any better. Uh, the damage is done. And that's really sad but <laughs> that's a good suggestion about Miss Kim. All right, Teresa. All right, I have a question about a majestic, ma majesty, sorry, majest, majesty palm that was planned out two weeks ago. And this is um, a real recent email coming in. So if you think back two weeks ago, we were having very nice warm weather and then we turned cold. Well, this is a tropical plant that doesn't like the cold. And the leaves are now turning, they were green, now they're turning yellow. It can be very much the weather if you hadn't protected it and brought it in or kept it away from the cold that we had, or even just if you moved it into too bright a sun too quickly after having been indoors. Typically a plant needs to acclimate it and you slowly change its conditions so that it matches either the outdoors or the indoors depending on which way you're bringing the plant. And that takes several days for the plant to accommodate. We've had a lot of winds, we've had some rough weather, We've had some storms. It, I would just hang tough. The weather's turning. It's finally going to be spring, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll come out of it. You may have lost a few of the fronds, but they put out several, so I think you'll be fine. But I think it's weather-related more than anything if it just got put outside. Okay, thank you. And now, Dyke. All right, just a, a quick email question here. It's the same one we seem to get over and over again about a hydrangea not blooming. And there's different kinds of hydrangeas out there. And so quickly, this is the, one of the blue or the pink uh, hydrangea macrophyllas. And the question says, you know, it's coming back green, but it's got some dead stalks. Uh, what does that mean? And how long should you wait? And I think maybe this says waited 15 years. <laughs> uh, the plant is perfectly winter hardy if you just like a green bush. It will come back green year after year after year. I don't know how long, forever. <laughs> My rule of thumb is three times and three strikes and you're out. If you've got a <laughs> cultivar or a type or a location where it doesn't bloom, um, what happens is it blooms on old wood that has to make it through the winter. So getting froze back, you don't get blooms. The other answer is there's other kinds of hydrangeas out there uh, that may not be blue or pink, but are a lot more reliable, the Annabelle or the Incredible. You can even cut that to the ground and get great big white blooms. So uh, on this particular plant, maybe another suggestion, give up. It, if it hasn't bloomed that many years in a row, it's probably not going to. Tough love. Tough love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Three strikes. I, I really do say the same thing. All right. Well, let's go to a lilac question. We're going to go to line three and Phil's question on lilacs. Hi, Phil. Line this is Lisa on line three. Well, Lisa, we're glad to chat with you. What is your question? <laughs> well, I have a question also about a flowering dogwood. Okay. Um, I purchased it about four or five years ago. First, it was approximately eight or nine foot tall when I got it. It did okay the first year. The second year, it lost a lot of its leaves. I just kind of kept watering it and pampering it. Then the uh, 
third year, the main trunk basically died out and it broke in half. So now my main trunk is only about four foot tall. Mm. I had a lot of growth around the bottom and the sides, so I kind of let it go to see what it would do. And it's like rather a large bush right now. And my question is, is I wonder how tall might it get since the main trunk broke off? <laughs> I have a Kusa dogwood that did that, or we kind of did it too, but um, it went ahead and got 15 feet tall as a bush. Now we didn't mind that and kind of knew it was going to do that, but the top died out of it. and, and you know, I think it's one of those where we also told it <coughs> it was on its last legs and then it kicked in. <laughs> it's been gorgeous, but it's a Coosa dogwood. Um, so it can get some size. I suppose you could prune it as well, but a dogwood as a bush is still going to get 10, 15, I would think. Oh, yeah. Easy 10, 15. You'll have a novelty in the neighborhood if and it's a dogwood You could even do a, a little bit of shaping of your own then and prune some of the lower pieces out if That's you wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just... It's amazing what a plant will do, and occasionally they will make a new central leader. It may not be as true and straight as you want it, but they'll try to make a new central leader. Okay, well, that'll be a fun experiment. <laughs> Think of it that way. Well, we're going to go to a question about uh, catmint cultivars. Let's go to Stephen's question on line four. Hi, uh, this is Steve Rand. Uh, Diane? Yes, hi. Yeah, hi. Um, quick question. Uh, around campus right now, there is what I think is a nepeta that's in bloom, and it <laughs> looks to be about the flower seem to be about two and a half feet high. Does anybody know what that, or is it a nepeta? And, and the other thing is, does, does anybody know what that cultivar is? Well, I'm looking over at Steve, <laughs> a two, two and a half foot tall one. Is it started yet, or oh. are they seeing salvia? Oh, I don't know. I haven't been on campus. I don't know. Well, oh, my, my cat mints are just going great. Are guns. they? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there are t t two, and I have a mine block. One of them is Six Hills Giant that might be in, in flower yeah. right now. Is Walker's and Low? Walker's Low. There you go. Isn't Sorry. Isn't the, it's that yeah, tall, it's, easily. Yeah, Walker's Low, uh, you might think, oh, it's a low-growing form, but it's a beautiful plant. It's great for the median strips, uh, tough site. It's a uh, excellent, excellent, and a perennial plant of the year. <laughs> that's, that's what I was thinking, too. It's just Walker's Low. It's so yeah. funny that it's not low. It's just from that side. I couldn't remember Six Hills Giant, and, yeah. <laughs> and you were, and I was and remembering. Then bigger is one Joanna Reed that I've been trying. That's even bigger than the, those two. Really? Now I've not seen yeah. that one in full flower. But anyway, the cat mints are looking gorgeous here on campus. Thanks, Stephen, for that. That was a good question. Now let's go to Barb's question. She has one on peonies on line two. Hi, Barb. Hi, Diane. I, I really enjoy your show. I watch it every week. Thank you. And um, I have a question. I've got quite a few peony bushes, the, you know, the old-fashioned kind, and and they're they're fairly old. And uh, when I got them, planted them, they were they were transplanted, and they started out. They were different shades of pink, light pink or a dark pink. And over the years, they've they've all faded out. They're all white. And I wondered if it was if that was normal you know, according to their age, or is there something, would it be the pH in the soil, or what I should do about it? <laughs> I have uh -huh. peonies that were from my great-grandmother, and they're exactly the same yeah. as they were before. Any ideas why it would fade from go? It wouldn't fade, but it would change. I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason for it to happen hmm I only if that and I wouldn't think so because it they're maybe from a, a cultivar where it's it died out and it's suckering up or something like that but I, somehow yeah if it was a really old one huh mm -hmm. yeah you've kind of stumped us on that because that is not a common thing to have happen we get that question every now and then on other types of plants and I can't think of why that would happen. So you have stumped us a little bit there, Barb, but um, maybe you'll get the answer to the question <laughs> by seeing what's going on. Well, let's go to our mag quiz section next. Where is the best place to plant an English rose? A, where there's plenty of sun. B, where there's plenty of shade. C, next to a tree. 
A where there's plenty of sun. Yes, it's time to think about roses where it's plenty of sun. <laughs> I've been seeing roses. In fact, I saw um, beautiful salvia next to knockout roses oh. today, oh, and that wow. was gorgeous, I the bet. really deep red knockout, the, and they were very short ones. <laughs> So it's a great season. There's so much to do. I'm glad to come in to work so that I can rest my hands from weeding. Not that I have <laughs> weeds, but, <laughs> but we want to thank each one of you for being here. It's great uh, to have a whole, yeah. edu uh, all educators <laughs> and all perennial enthusiasts <laughs> on, one, <laughs> on one panel. And the folks did nice questions for us. Yes, we want to thank each one of you as well for watching. We hope that you'll get out and garden because it is gorgeous now. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.